I want to, to kind of start off this morning's message just a, a little bit different. Uh, last Sunday, we began to talk about uh, forward living, and uh, hopefully you were encouraged uh, by uh, that message. But I, I began to allow the wheels to turn in my mind this past week on where the Lord would continue to uh, lead us uh, in this, this series, and I began to uh, feel as the Holy Spirit was leading me towards a, a subject of being a warrior. I believe that in this, this season and in this hour that the church, not just the corporate body, but individually, that God is calling us to be warriors for his kingdom. And as I was thinking about that, I, um, I don't know if we have any American Idol fans out there, but uh, that's something that me and the, the kids and the family like to sit down uh, throughout uh, the week and watch the uh, recorded version of those things. But tonight there's going to be uh, a pre-recorded episode that's going to be aired uh, at, at 7 o'clock. And this is uh, the part of the, the show where I think like the top 40 or whatever it is, they're, they're having to suffer and they, they're sent to uh, Hawaii for uh, the period of the competition that they're in. And I was watching a kind of a, a pre-shot of, of tonight's episode, and it was a young lady. She was around 16 years old, and she was very, uh, when they told her story earlier in the season, uh, she was active in her church. She was part of the worship team, had a beautiful voice. And, um, and so tonight, you're going to see it. It was just kind of a, a pre-shot of tonight's show. Uh, you're going to see, and she's going to be on the stage in Hawaii with all of these people uh, around her, and she sings a song that many of us are familiar with, and it's the song called Break Every Chain. Now, we know the, 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 the meat of the song is talking about how Jesus can break various chains in our life, various addictions, various thought processes, various, uh, uh, various habits, or whatever it is, and it's just a, a powerful song about Jesus being able to um, break chains, but also part of the song talks about that he's raising up an army, and, and it's, a, it's a military term that we as the church uh, are called and are being raised up as, uh, ar as an army and as warriors for the kingdom. And I, as I watched this little segment of, of the show, uh, after she sung, man, she gave God everything she could. And she said a little bit in the song about how she felt like she had been given this platform as uh, an opportunity to share what's really on the inside of her. And shortly after her singing the song, the judges, you can hear them speaking. She can't, but you can hear them talking. And one of the particular uh, judges said this. He said, I, I really didn't connect with the song. And as I thought about that, I began to come to the conclusion that there's a really good chance that he could not connect with the song because chains had not been broken and he was not part of the army. And, and I, was, I was thankful as you look through this, this young lady at, at this part of the show now goes before the judges. And as she's standing or sitting rather before the judges, they, they look to her and they give her this advice. And at the end of that segment, they tell her that she will not be moving forward on the show. As I watch this young lady where many contestants would see that their vision and their dream for their life had all of a sudden been shattered by the decision of three people, I still on this young lady saw a smile on her face. I still saw a grin and a response unlike anyone else. And that was that she was going to leave the show knowing, though she wasn't moving forward, she was going to move forward in life and in her journey of being in the army of the Lord. And I, I began to think about that. Man, how, what, what, what bravery, what, 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 what uh, example has a 16-year-old set for the entire world to watch and to see that this life is greater, it's greater than anything that this world could ever offer, whether it's American Idol or anything else. It was encouraging to me. And as I thought about that, I began to reflect upon um, my, my children's life. I remember as Christian was growing up, man, he was always dressing up as a superhero. He, he would put on the Spider-Man costume and he would go through and he was always shooting something with his web or he would try to, to stick to the washer and dryer and try to climb with his, his superpower as Spider-Man. Every time we would go to Branson, I could probably pay for this entire building with the amount of money that I have spent 
on custom-made lightsabers at Branson, at, the, at the, the Branson Landing. I mean, we would go, and every single time he had to get a lightsaber, and we would have, it couldn't just be a regular lightsaber. It had to be a custom-built. It had to go this way and that way. It had to have different, different gadgets on it and all that. Man, I would always spend, but, but we would go home, and his buddies would come over, and man, one day one would be Luke Skywalker, another one would be a Anakin, and another one would be Darth Vader, and man, they would spend hours with these lightsabers fighting and going at one another. What memories? Then I began to think about moms. You can put a a situation such as a mom that is real quiet, really laid back, not saying much, really never uh, confrontational or anything like that, but you take that same mom and... (laughs) And you look at, the, look at her and someone start messing with that child. Not just any child, but her child. You take a mom that is laid back, doesn't do a whole lot, say a whole lot, and you start messing with her child. All of a sudden, something comes out of her. Something begins to come to surface that normally you wouldn't see. As I began to look at my life as I was growing up, man, there was uh, something. I wasn't serving the Lord, wasn't living for God. And I was always quick to fight, always quick to, to get into an argument and a, and a confrontation. I was laid back, but I was quick to always get in a confrontation. One of my Achilles heels, one of my weaknesses growing up was, was I never knew when to throw a punch and when not to throw a punch. Oftentimes when I threw punches, I shouldn't have, and when I should have, I didn't. And so this was a great battle and weakness within my life. As I began to think about the young lady on American Idol and as I began to think about Christian and him wanting to be Darth Vader or Spider-Man or how a mother is willing to, to, to fight for someone that's coming against her child or even me growing up as a, a teenager in willingness to fight, I began to reflect upon the reality that these are not just personality traits. These are not just part of our personality, but I believe that on the inside of us, God has put in our DNA as men and women of God to be warriors. And I believe that that many times the enemy takes what God has instilled within our heart and within our lives. I believe the enemy takes those things and they utilize or he utilizes it against us. But God has has put something in us, something that is willing to, to raise or rise to the occasion in times times of need. Many people, when they think of of Jesus, uh, they think of Jesus as just a mild uh, manner type guy or or maybe a poor guy or an educated uh, Galilean. Many people, when they look at Jesus, they, they see the love and the mercy side of it. But the reality is, as you follow and you look at the life of Jesus, you discovered that his love and his mercy was, was, was compassed by a, a fierceness and a passion. I believe that, that one of the greatest warriors of all times was Jesus as the definition of, of a warrior is, is a person that is experienced in battle but also brave. Experienced in battle but also brave. As I look at the life and the example of Jesus, we see the greatest warrior, a man that was full of bravery. We see a man that, that was full of, 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 of power and passion and all of those other things. As I began to look at the Word of God, there's a, there's a part of the, of the Scripture in Exodus 15 where it was right after uh, God had delivered the, the, the Israelites out of the slavery of the Egyptians. And they, they come to the part of their journey that they're looking in front of a, of, a, of a sea, a red sea to be exact. On one side was the sea and behind them was the Pharaoh and his army. They had to either go back to where they came from and face certain death or in slavery once again, or somehow figure out how to get to the other side of the sea. We know the story. God split the sea, and God's people went across it, and they saw that just in, that se- in, in itself was a miraculous victory for God's people. But as they got to the other side, Pharaoh and his army began to, to, to encompass and, and, and surge after them. And as they crossed the sea, they looked back, and the same God that had split the sea now began with one moment, one issue of instruction. God was able to see that same sea, see clothes ultimately drowning Pharaoh and his army. 
So when they got to the other side, in, in Exodus 15, you got to realize Moses saw the miraculous, the, the, the over a million people, some believe three million Israelites, seen the miraculous of God. And so on the other side of this miracle, Moses begins to write a song. In fact, it's called the Song of Moses. After seeing all of what God's done through the plagues and through the sea and through the deliverance of his people, Moses begins, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, begins to pen a song known as the Song of Moses. In verse number three of this song, after seeing everything that Moses had seen, he says this, that the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The miraculousness of God and the character of God, Moses says, he is a warrior. Now, fast forward several hundred years later in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34, Jesus begins to explain what he brought here to this place we call earth. He says this, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth, but I did not come to bring peace, but I came to bring but a sword, a sword. You look at the character and who Jesus is and the warrior mentality. Yes, he was full of meekness. He was full of compassion. He was full of love. But there was a warrior on the inside of him, someone that was brave and someone that was true. You go to Luke chapter 4 and we see the temptations of Jesus and, and the Spirit of God led him out into the wilderness. And here comes the enemy, Satan, comes in. And we know the two temptations of Christ. One was to throw himself off the cliff and, and save himself or to eat or to take the, the rock and to turn it into bread. We look at Jesus in a time of, of, of weakness because he had not eaten for 40 days. He had not drank anything for 40 days. And in his moment of weakness and the attack of the enemy, he was able to look eye to eye, face to face with the enemy and declare the word and the truth of God's word. Revelations chapter 19, when John the Revelator was on the Isle of Patmos, he penned a couple of things under the inspiration of the Spirit. Verse number 11, he says this. He said, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like a blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. Now look at verse 13. He says, he is dressed in a, a robe that is dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. Coming out, verse 15, of his mouth is a sharp sword, a sharp sword which, with which to strike down the nation. And on his robe, verse 16, and on his thigh, his name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, something I want us to consider, every person here, the young lady on, on Idol that I was talking about, was a warrior for the kingdom, brave for the kingdom, regardless of the judgment of the, of the judges and people watching throughout the, the world. She was not fearful because she was going to declare the truth and the goodness of God's word. As I began to think about that, the things that we go through, the, 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 the battles and the trials that we face in our life, I truly believe are things that are developing, listen to me at home, are developing us and to the warrior that we're called to be. In other words, every trial you go through, every battle, listen to me, every battle that you're warring against, it's, it's greater than those battles, and it's greater than those wars that you're facing. But it is developing in you who God is calling you to be. In other words, God is going to take, not only develop you into the warrior that you need to be, but God's going to take that. He's going to turn it around for the glory and for the, the furtherance of his kingdom. So just understand this, that the trials that you're facing, the battles that you're warring against, is developing the warrior on the inside of you. Just because someone has a warrior suit on doesn't mean that they're a warrior. Are you with me, Facebook? Just because I come up here and, and I, put, I put armor on and I got me a, a samurai sword and I got the mask and, and I got the sound and I got the look and I got all, does not mean that I know what to do with the sword. It does not mean that I can actually win any kind of battle just because I'm dressed that way. Just because we have the Christian t-shirt, just because we have a hundred Bibles within our home. Just because we come to church or we watch online does not make us a warrior. 
But what, what, what reveals and what demonstrates the war, warrior inside of us is when we go through something like what we're facing right now. It's when we, we war against things that try to rob our faith. It's when we war against things that try to steal our family and try to, to wreck our homes and try to destroy our business. It's in those moments that, that we show that we got more than a t-shirt and that we got more than a Bible, that we got more than just all the scriptures memorized. But when we war against these things, are you with me this morning? When we war against these things, we're actually engaging and know what to do with those things. You see, it's when a warrior that's dressed the way and talks the way, it's when they act. It's when you see them in the battle that you know that the warrior is revealed. One of my favorite Christian movies that that I've watched is a movie called War Room uh, because it, it shows us the identity of every believer, that we are in a war, and the way that you win the war is through prayer and through seeking God in his word. Now, right now, as we, as the church, I'm talking about the corporate body, every person that is watching this morning, not just SFA folks. Right now, where we are as a church, we say church without walls right now. Right now, we demonstrate and reveal who we really are. Are you with me this morning? That, that, that where we are, we're, we're in this corner that the enemy thought that he has been victorious. But right now is when we reveal ourselves more than ever. For the glory of God. We're all warriors for the kingdom. Listen to me. We're all warriors. That little boy shooting webs through the, the kitchen like Christian did when he was three and four. Inside of him, inside of me, inside of you is a God-given mentality that we're called to battle. And as I thought about that, the, the, the thoughts that I would like to share this morning is the fact that God has given every warrior three specific things. God has given every warrior three specific things. Number one is this. God has given every warrior someone to protect. As we look at that, we we see Nehemiah chapter 4. Real quick, I want to give us the story. The, The wall that was surrounding Jerusalem had been destroyed. And there was a man by the name of of Nehemiah that was a cup barrier for, for the for the king. The cup barrier was, was the one that, that would, would drink uh, whatever the king's drink was before it being handed uh, to the king himself. In other words, if, if he was basically on the front lines for the king, so if someone had poisoned the drink, Nehemiah would drink it, and ultimately Nehemiah would die and not the king. He was testing it for the king himself. Well, the wall surrounding Jerusalem had, had been destroyed, and God spoke to Nehemiah to go and to rebuild the wall. To make a long story short, he's released by the king to go rebuild uh, this wall. And him and, and a very limited amount of people began to rebuild this wall. And as they're doing so, a man by the name of Sanballat began in his main army, main men, watched uh, Nehemiah as he was rebuilding the wall. And for a great period of time, he, he laughed at him. Because he saw their manpower, he saw their resource, he saw all of these things, and they sat back and and laughed at Nehemiah and his team team as they began to rebuild the wall. But it became a part of the story where Sambalan and his men would look and he would watch Nehemiah, and, and he saw that, wow, we've been laughing at this group of people, we've been laughing at Nehemiah, but really... It's going to be successful, what they had sought sought out to do by rebuilding this wall. And we didn't think it was possible. They're making it possible. You see, what what Samballad and all of those others did not see was that it was not Nehemiah and those that were surrounding him that were rebuilding the wall, but it was the power of God flowing through them. It was not their abilities, but God's ability. And there was a part of the story where Samballot kind of got serious and they were going to come against Nehemiah. So Nehemiah has this, I don't know, huge church service and, and he looks to the people because he sees that, that, that war or battle is imminent. And so he looks in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 14 and this is what he said. He looks to the people. And he says this, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. You see, it's in moments of of battle. It is in moments of attack. It is in moments of, 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 of things coming against us that we've got to stop in our homes, in our places of employment, in this church today. We have to stop and we have to remember. We've got to remember who the Lord is. 
that the same God that delivered them out of the Egyptian bondage, the same God that had split the Red Sea, is the same God that was empowering them to rebuild those walls. And he was going to be the same God that was going to protect them from attack. And he says, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. But look what, he, what Nehemiah tells these men, these people that are listening. He says, but fight for your families, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You got somebody to fight for, church. Are you with me? You have somebody to fight for. What Nehemiah was saying is, is that, yes, God is great and God is good. God is our protector. But you have a part in this battle. You have a responsibility in this battle, and that is to fight for your family, to fight for those that God has put in your life. Don't sit back at home and speak negativity over your homes and during this time of pandemic. Don't sit back and, and promote fear and doubt and all of this worrisome stuff, but declare God's wholeness and faithfulness and goodness over your home. In other words, what Nehemiah was telling his people was get your eyes off the attack and get your eyes on remembering who God is. As you look at the news and you see this pandemic, it's really easy to see your family in a corner in fear. But what Nehemiah was telling and what I'm telling you this morning, if you're watching, get your eyes off Sam ballot. Get your eyes off the enemy and the plan that they're trying to do and remember who God is. The same God that saved you, the same God that delivered you, the same God that set you free is the same God that's going to put protection over your home. He is the same God that's going to put a protection around your family. He is the same God that's going to put his protection around your business. As you look in the mirror as an owner, as a, as a manager, you look in the mirror and say the same God that split the Red Sea is the same God that's going to part the water in my circumstance and in my situation. You see, as a warrior, you're only as good as your training. Are you with me? You don't have the word of God in you, and you ain't spending time praying. And the only time, listen, don't turn me off now while the preaching's getting good. I'm telling you right now, if the only time you pray is when you're praying over your fried bologna sandwich. You're going to only be, you're going to get a breakfast, you're going to have a breakfast of warrior mentality. But somebody that knows how to get in their prayer closet, somebody that says, Lord, give me a word today for my family. God, what is it that you have? What is it that you're wanting to say? Are you with me? What is it that you want me to say right now? That's how you protect your family. Warriors, you have somebody to protect. You know, um, one of my favorite actors is Liam, uh, I think you say Liam ne Nelson or Neeson. Neeson, yeah. Man, you're talking about fighting for your family. You got taken one, taken two, taken three. You got commuter, cold pursuit. I think the guy needs to get a different role. <laughs> but he, he is a protector of his family. He told the guy in taken one, he said, I'm going to hunt you down. I'm going to find you. And now we're not, we're, not, we're not asking you to kill, but he said, and I'm going to kill you. He was a protector of his family, and he did what he said he was going to do. We live to protect. Dad, you wake up every day, and your highest calling is to protect your family. Your greatest responsibility, Mom, is to pray and ask God as a warrior for the kingdom to put a hedge of protection around your family, not just with this pandemic, but with everything in life. You see, as your pastor, since this, this pandemic has started, I have, I have prayed for you and I've had a burden to protect this body. And that's why we're meeting in our homes this morning rather than in person. As believers or warriors for the kingdom, we are to protect those that are around us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse uh, number 12 says, Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. Amen. We have, we have people to protect as warriors for the, for the kingdom. Number two is we have a kingdom to advance. We have a kingdom to advance as warriors. We, just, just because we're at home watching doesn't mean that we, don't stop, that we stop advancing the kingdom. Right now, in this season, in this moment, I believe that when our church doors open up, there's going to be an influx of people because of the seed that we're sowing right now. Don't wait till the church opens back up to sow the seed. Sow the seed right now, and the manifestation of that seed is going to come to surface when we open these doors. We open these doors again. 
In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, it says, When Jesus had called the twelve disciples, he gave them power and authority to drive out all diseases, and, and, or, or to, to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out, look at this, to proclaim. What does that word proclaim mean? To declare. Not just in the church building. Not to declare in the temple, but he called them out to proclaim or to declare the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That's why we pray for for Christie's cousin this morning. Not because there's power in me, but there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power in the 39 stripes that he bore upon his back prior to hanging on Calvary. The kingdom of God is bigger and greater than any virus or any attack of the enemy. The Bible declares to seek, and we said this last Sunday, to seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, don't seek your kingdom. You're not called to build your kingdom, and I'm not called to build my kingdom. But we're called right now as warriors for the kingdom to build his kingdom. One of the things that Jesus said, it says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And what you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. And what what you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. Right now, we bind this, this, this virus and this spirit of fear that the enemy is coming, and we lose faith and healing to flow through not only our area, but this entire, this entire world. We're called to be the light of the world. We're called to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God. God has prepared our works well in advance. As I said last week, this virus didn't catch God off guard. This virus is a direct result of living in a broken world. The sin of Adam and Eve opened the door for this pandemic and so much more. But Jesus has given us, he has given us the power and the authority over this stuff and to advance his kingdom. With everything going around us, there's still a kingdom. There's still a kingdom to advance. We have a cause to fight for. The third and final thing this morning, not only do we have a kingdom to advance, but we have a battle. We have a battle to win. David, who knew all about battle, said this in Psalms 144, verse 1 and 2. He said, Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Right now, church, we're not in a physical war. Amen. I was so thankful to see our governor this past week call our state to a time of prayer and have pastors from all over the state began to declare the word of God over our state. Man, I was so thankful for that. You see, this is not a physical battle right now that we're in, but it's a spiritual war. And it's a, it's a spiritual battle. And God has, has trained us and given us the abilities to fight this war spiritually. You see, Christianity is not a playground, but it's a battleground. We're, we're, we're not fighting and facing flesh and, and blood, but against power and principalities. We're facing a dark world. It's a spiritual war, not a physical one. This morning, I, I close by these final thoughts. How do we step into the mission and how do we allow the inner warrior to come out? We have to understand this. That victory isn't always what you conquer later, but victory is being faithful and obedient today. We, you know what? Tomorrow is going to be hard enough in itself, but right now I'm declaring victory over Stigler First Assembly. I'm declaring victory today over my home. I'm declaring victory over every business in Stigler in the surrounding area. I declare victory over every leader, every church right now that, that maybe is struggling because they're not able to come in together. I declare victory over the Assembly of God, the Pentecostal, the Baptist, the, the Church of Christ, the It it doesn't matter. Every single church, I declare victory today because victory isn't always what we conquer later. It's it's, it's being faithful and obedient right now today. You see, Jesus wasn't just victorious when he gave his life on the cross. It was when he fought against the devil well before the cross. The stone and the bread, him saying man cannot live by bread alone. Jumping off the cliff, do not put the Lord to the test. Bow down to me. And he says, only worship the Lord God himself. So this morning, church, I close with this one final scripture. In Joel chapter number 3, verses 9 through 11, he says this. Say to the nations far and wide, get ready for war. Get out your best warriors. That means the ones that, man, they can really bring, they can really bring it to the table. Let all your fighting men advance, advance for your attack. 
Hammer your plowshares into swords and pruning hooks into your spears. Train even, look at this, train even your weaklings to be warriors. Those of you that are out there watching, you say, man, I, I, I'm a weakling. I, I don't, I'm not a spiritual giant. I don't, I don't know how to fight for my family. I don't know how to advance the kingdom. I don't know how to engage in this war. Understand this, that God can empower you. That God can give you the abilities, listen to me, the abilities to be the greatest of warriors. He says, come quickly, all you nations ever, everywhere. Gather together in, in the valley. And now, O oh Lord, call out your warriors. My final thought for today is this. Can you picture, you know, the story of, of David and Goliath? <laughs> can, you, can you imagine David walking up to this huge giant, him being just a young shepherd boy? Could you imagine him going up and saying this? Mr. Goliath, sir, um, let's talk about this in a, a civil, let's talk about it in civil nature. I suggest that we seek out a neutral third party who can help us acknowledge and validate each other's feelings and work towards a peaceful reconciliation. Come on. Some of y'all are thinking that's crazy because it is crazy. If you go back to the story, there's no way David was going to do it because he'd heard the defilement towards the God that he served. And one of his responses was, well, we got to try to settle this civilly. No, 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 no. The, the, the shepherd boy, he was looking after the shepherd, but on the inside of him was a warrior that nobody else saw. What was in his DNA was something that really, in the moment, he didn't realize, but in the moment that he heard the attack against God, the moment that we hear the attack against the church, David rose up. The inner warrior came to life. And he says, who are you that comes against the armies? of the living God. Give me a stone. Amen. Some of us at home right now that are living in fear, you're living in doubt, you're living in uncertainty, you're wondering where you're going to and how you're going to pay your bills, you're worried about your business, you're worried about this, and God sent me by this church today to go live through Facebook to tell you to pick up your stone because there's a warrior on the inside of you that nobody else has seen, and you're going to cast stones for your family. You're going to cast stones for your business. We're going to cast stones for this church. Everything the enemy is trying to do through this pandemic, we're going to pick up a stone, and we're going to take him out because we are victorious through Jesus Christ. We've got to know when to throw the punch. We've got to know when to throw the punch. Not when things are going good. Right now, when things and everything's coming against us, we've got to rear back and we've got to throw our stone because the gates of hell is not going to prevail against the kingdom of God. I want to pray for you. Father, right now, I just pray for every person that's watching with us this morning. Father, I pray that, Lord, that you would just bless them. Lord, whatever it is that you have on the inside of them that maybe they don't even know. In this season of pandemic, this season of uncertainty, this season of fear, I pray that every single person, Lord, would allow that inner warrior to come to surface and they would wage war against this attack, that they would advance the kingdom, that they would engage in the war, and they would protect those that you have put in their lives. And on the other side of this, your kingdom's going to prevail. And Father, we worship you. This morning, if you're still watching and you don't, you don't know the Lord as your Savior, it is imperative for you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Not just because of where we, at, we are at in this world, but because eternity is at stake. So I want you right now, if you're watching online, man, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. But don't just say a prayer. Believe it in your heart. That's where the power is, is you believe it. And I want you to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that Jesus came to this earth to die for me. I come to you and I ask you to forgive me of my sin, of my faults, and of my failures. I invite your son to come into my life to be the Lord of that life. From this day forth, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to lead or be led by your spirit in Christ's name. If you prayed that prayer, man, shoot me an inbox on Facebook after service sometime because I got some stuff that I'd like to mail to you or get to you. And so, man, we love you. You are part of the family of God. You have sealed your eternity for Christ's sake. Amen. God bless you. We want you to tune back in tonight at six o'clock as we do part two of Not Afraid. God bless you. We love you. And remember, Stigler first, we're going to love God and we're going to love people. Thanks for tuning in today.